In this episode of the FinTech Files, I'm delighted to speak to Brian McCarthy, Director of Marketing at Move. And we're going to investigate what it's like to be at the core of FinTech and to head the marketing there. Brian, welcome to the FinTech Files. Hey George, thanks for having me. This is going to be fun. Absolutely. So I see that you've joined uh, at the beginning of the year and the, it's a company that I've been following for a while. And I noticed that your CEO, Wade Arnold, said that we're trying to build the most boring company in FinTech. So <laughs> how's your approach to marketing in a company like that? How's it going your first few months in the job? Yeah, great question. Wade has uh, been caught saying that line several times. So you're correct. I, I joined Move back in January, but I have a long history with Wade. I go back a, over a decade ago. He hired me as his first marketer at his first startup, his little company called T8 Webware. And then we changed the company name to Bano. Then a few years later, Bano got acquired by Jack Henry and Associates. Uh, so I have a, a long winding history with Wade. So New to move just a couple months in, but have you know gone a long ways back with Wade and some of the others on the leadership team. But to, to get to your question about the the most boring company in fintech, really what you know Wade and w what we mean by that is this stuff just has to work, and that's really moves value proposition. We make it easy for developers to accept, store, and disperse money. It's nothing you know, magical. It's just developers and SaaS companies and platform companies need a way to move money. And that's really what we're trying to do. Just uh, reinvent, just making it so they can focus on moving money and we'll handle, you know, all the compliance and everything else that goes along with that. Great. And I guess as well, it's about abstracting all the complexity on your side. So you, part, you, you do the, the boring part in order to have, make it simple for people yeah, that, who use the services and then they can build on top of that. That's right. It really, in, in those different areas, accepting money, storing money, uh, sending money, there's really entire industries built around those silos. And that's really what we view them as today. They're completely disparate. And oftentimes developers are stuck having to sew those silos together and figure it out. And instead of spending their precious time building new features on their product, they're stuck figuring out how this fintech industry works and now all of a sudden they're learning all these acronyms and wondering what about compliance and what about this abstraction is from another bank who sits on top of another system all this stuff so we want to handle all of that stuff that's and we want that developer just to be able to focus on building great features rather than spending their their time worrying about all that junk who are the type of funds that are using move what kind of problem do you solve for them? Yeah, great question. Right now we're in beta with a handful of customers, but it's really our customer. It really comes back to that notion that every company is going to be a, a fintech company. And, and more specifically, we believe every company is going to be a, a payments company. One of our investors at Andreessen Horowitz, Angela Strange, has a great talk and she's written about that. And that's really what we believe. So it's in some ways our, our customer is can be anyone. It's all these SaaS companies, all these new fintech companies, all of these companies are realizing we need to send money or accept money. And there's solutions out there that exist today, but it's often you don't have that full control. And, and these companies are realizing like, oh, we want to control that experience. We actually want that to live inside our UI so we can do unique things that are special to our audience. So of course they could send folks off to some other portal or have them sign up for some other solution. But at that point, they're losing that customer, right? They're, they're saying, oh, you have to go sign up for this other thing or we're going to shove you off to this other experience. So we're really focused on, on that developer who, who is ch now charged with building out payments in their platform or they're tasked with figuring out how to accept money in, inside their app or inside their marketplace. And we're going directly to the network. So we're connecting directly to the networks. So it's just the uh, fastest and most seamless way to send, store, and, and accept money. So you said you're, you're going through the networks. How was it working before? Can you take us for an example of how they were handling it before and how they, they can handle it now? with move yeah from a product standpoint our customers have a uh, admin backend that they're signing into where they can see all of the the payments that they're they're making money coming in and out it's one place one beautiful dashboard that they can do all of that see all of the all the money movements do all the reconciliation see uh, reporting see who's been approved who hasn't all of those controls and permissioning happens you know inside that platform so one thing that 
Move is bringing to the table is bringing all of the different networks together in one platform. So there's other platforms where you know, the most common and low hanging fruit of sending money is by ACH. If your business scales and you're getting pressure from maybe your end users, you now want to send by RTP or there's all these different, you know, ways to send money. So we're stitching together all of those different modalities into one platform. So if you're with one vendor today who uses ACH and you go to them saying, hey, all our end users really want money faster. We wanna use real-time payments, RTP. That vendor may not even have control over that. They may be sitting on top of an abstraction of some other bank who isn't part of that network yet or whatever it may be. So for them to even get that feature request in, they have to go through a hot maze and that SaaS company may not even be able to build that because again, there's some abstraction uh, and they don't even have that connection yet. So we're really bringing all of those payment modalities together. So if you just want to keep using ACH, great. But down the road, as we add more payment gateways, they're just going to be available in the platform together. So as your business scales, it's you don't have to worry about it. You can just start offering that to your end users for a much better, much faster user experience. Right, right. Because again, as a SaaS company, my, my focus is very much on the product that I'm offering and having a great experience for my clients. And I need to get paid or, or send money, but it's not it's it's never going to be my core competency or focus right? that's right and our our pitch is it shouldn't have to be like so there is this saying you hey every company is going to be a, a fintech company but it's almost a, a catch-22 it's i don't know if every company wants to be a fintech company i think they want the benefits of being a fintech company but they don't want to have to go figure out compliance and risk and building straight to these networks and what that looks like and oftentimes when they go down that path, whether they go talk to their bank or go start figuring out how do we even do payment, they're given a huge, massive PDF, 400 page PDF. Well, here you go. You can write to our APIs. Here's the here's how you do that. And it's, it's oh, who has time to, to read that or let alone figure it out. And so that's really where, where Move comes in is we've taken care of all of that for them. And it's based on open source and it's still delivered by an API, but is it a lot more accessible than, let's say, the, the benchmark that's been set by incumbents? Let's say. That's right. Uh, Move really started out uh, a couple of years ago, actually, with Wade and a couple of engineers open sourcing, putting them up on GitHub, these low-level banking protocols, because he kept running into this problem. It's like these things should be, there's so many fintech companies, everyone's building, wanting to learn how to build payments. That stuff should just be open sourced. So we have a bunch of open source projects and we have a big investment into the open source community that we still have our developers still working on. Community members are contributing to it, but then we also obviously have our paid platform and that's where you're gonna get some more features. You're gonna get access to the, the reporting, the, the admin dashboard, all those good things. And what the company had to build, how did they get started? And what have they been building behind the scenes in order to get to the point? Yeah, sure. So like I said, Wade started Move really a couple years ago, and it started out as a passion project. He has had a couple of successful startups that he was involved with, and then he was looking for you know, that next challenge, that next problem, and he kept running into this. So he was funding this problem on his own with just open sourcing some of these protocols, getting them up on GitHub, and then they started a Slack community. And that Slack community is open to the public. It was started off with a couple dozen developers, friends and family in there, but now it's grown. It's over 1,800 developers and builders and doers in, in this space, which is amazing. And in some ways, that's a, a vanity metric. But if you join the Slack community, you'll quickly see like just how engaged it is. It's every week there's some new uh, fintech founder or some developer asking a question. And then before it's slow, the lead developer at Cash App is responding to you and saying, hey, I can help you with that. Or X lead at PayPal or wherever is saying, hey, here's how we did it at PayPal. I'm happy to hop on a call and, and explain it more. It's So seeing those little just everyone coming together to help each other out is really amazing. But back to your question about just what have we been doing? So it was built out of this community. And then in December of last year of 2020 is when Move got its Series A from Andreessen Horowitz, who, who led that round. And that's really where Move became a company. So up until that point, I'd say it was pretty much still a passion project for Wade and the small folks he had joining him to open source this stuff. And then there's something interesting enough there where then Wade did the, the fundraising. And that's shortly after a, a bunch of people joined. I joined in January 
And we've been, every week we have two, three people joining the team. So we're growing very quickly, but we've been for the last four months building that platform. So like I, I mentioned, we're in beta now with a handful of customers, but we're just heads down building our platform, connecting directly to all these different payment modalities. Uh, so then we can, you know, unleash our, our platform to the world. Oh, that's really fun about the Slack community. I have joined the Slack community. I wish yeah. I, had, I was more active on it, uh, but it makes perfect sense when you think about oh, open source. It's an open community as well. That's right. And it's uh, Wade was really smart. He invested in that community early on. That was here long before I was here. We have uh, someone else, Graham, who runs that community. So he's not on my marketing team. There's really a separation between marketing and community. Obviously, we benefit from each other, but it's that's my definition of marketing. It's like building a, a community, and it's just growing itself. We we have that Slack community. We're also putting on the, the first ever developer conference for this space for fintech, so called fintech DevCon, and we have the who's who in the fintech world speaking at that event. Folks from Cash App and folks from the crypto world and and everywhere else. So it's really exciting to just see this kind of natural, organic growth of the community. And uh... This is on my purpose, but is it going to be in Colorado? It is going to be in Colorado. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Wade, our founder, lives in Colorado. Uh, so, yeah, it's in September in Colorado. I don't know if it's you know going to be there again next year, but this, hopefully it will maybe yeah. move around to some different spots. Oh, yeah, it's uh, fintechdevcon.io is the website, and tickets are on sale for that now. I, I didn't know, but somehow knowing the world, I make a nice uh, conference. That would that all makes sense. But going back to our marketing and actually yeah. to our Slack channel, it's really interesting that you mentioned this is a, because I must say, I discovered the Slack channel and I thought that must be a really smart marketing move because you get into people's conversation, etc. But what you're telling me is it was before the marketing. Is there ever uh, a discussion about, oh, what the resources that we put into this or other initiatives and the return on investment, especially now that we are with venture capital back and it's a different perspective than a personal project. Yeah, it's interesting. We definitely have dedicated resources. Graham's our community manager, and then we have you know engineers who are dedicated to continuing to work on those op open source projects, which is very much a part of that community as well. But yes, it was even very much in the, the seed round and the Series A pitch deck about our community. So it very much is like core to our belief. We believe in community. We're growing this community, and our commitment to it is then putting on this massive conference with all these big names in the fintech industry. So it's, we're not just putting up a Slack channel and saying, hey, here's our community. I think we're trying to take it a step further and say, hey, we're gonna continue to invest in this community by having dedicated resources from the Move team work on these things. We're gonna put on this massive conference. Uh, and that conference, it's not folks from Move. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think our head of product and design is, is doing one talk, but that's, it's not a sales pitch for Move. There's no, he's not even going to be talking about the, the move product. It's just about design and building things in this space. It's very much about helping others. Again, back to that notion of, like, hey, all, all of a sudden you're a developer. Now you're being told to go figure out fintech or, hey, we need to build payments into our, you need a home to figure that out. And you want to be able to ask people questions and have resources. And, and that's really what that community is all about. Yeah, and right? uh, you mentioned that for you, marketing is very much about building community. So can you tell us a little bit about how you approach the job and what were the, some of the first things that you, you put into place? Yeah, so I'll pull back the curtain a little bit. So before I move, I was using, I mean, we have our head of product and design, Josh Sadler is an incredible designer himself, but Josh and Wade were working with a design agency uh, called Gigantic Design, uh, who really helped us with the branding and the, our logo and all of that. So there was a, a previous, uh, what on move.io today, there's a, a precursor to that. So we, we really buttoned up and Wade was smart and invested early on in design, which was great because you don't always see that in a startup. Startup, you can tell things are that gets shoved down the line. Say, yeah, we don't have time for that. We need to build product. Again, I think that was a smart move by Wade. So we have a relationship with a, a design agency, Gigantic. They do fantastic work. They've really helped our, our brand and our identity come to life. So since joining, I've been doing a lot of work of just tightening up our positioning. I think we have a, a great brand. It looks really fantastic. And I've been able to just keep adding on top of that and working with the design team there. But really, a lot of my days are spent uh, with Wade and just articulating what's in his head 
and working on pitch decks and working on positioning statements because that's crucial in the early days for us to get that because it's a startup. We're running around like crazy. There's so many different things to be doing and everyone's plates are full and we need to get this product to market. We need to get customers on it, all of that stuff. But if you don't have solid positioning, you're going to have a really hard time getting that next customer. It's a lot of like down and dirty working with the founders, working with our leadership team on positioning and decks and slides about how we talk about our product. And let's let's make a small language tweak here because I think this is much stronger. So all that nitty gritty of just getting down all our kind of pitch deck and what that looks like and how do we describe what we do, all of that fun stuff, spending a lot of time doing that. You know, what's really interesting about Move the Brand from an external point of view, just looking at the website, is that although you say you're the most boring Comp, uh, or trying to build the most boring. I would say there's a warm feeling about it, undoubtedly, and there's little hearts on the website. So yeah. it's it's a very interesting point about marketing because obviously Ray, the management, the, the founder, there's a vision that pre-existed your marketing. But you tell me you still you're working together on on making on communicating this because it's not that simple. Absolutely. And I, I think that's one thing that some marketers have a hard time understanding is, in my opinion, positioning is, it's not a you do it and then it's set and forget it. I think positioning is a ongoing, just like a product, you're always tweaking it, you're always iterating on it. It may be good and you go get, you go try it out on a, say you have a pitch deck or a sales deck or whatever. You may use that for a quarter or for a few months and then hopefully you're coming back to your marketing team saying, yeah, this this isn't working anymore. Hey, we keep getting you know hit with these challenges as we're as we're pitching. But I don't think positioning is ever. Hey, we did it and now we're done and now we're it's set for good. It's like this evolving thing. Of course, at some point you have to like say, yep, this is it. We're going to use this for a while and go test it out. But then you got to bring it back and have that really tight collaboration with sales, with leadership, even with the product team to make sure we're representing the, the product correctly. But yeah, it's this ongoing effort and it's uh, we get one version out and then it's quiet for a while and we work on other things. And then it's, oh yeah, we need to, let's come back to that again. It's not quite right again. Yeah, so right now, early days as a startup, we are heavily focused on just building content on our blog. Again, there were some blog posts before I arrived, so I've been really just building a system and a process around that and building out a content calendar. So it's it's nothing magical and it's nothing like, oh, we're doing this amazing campaign. It's really that just basic stuff and having really great blog post, having a, a process to it, and making sure we are putting thoughtful content out into the world. So we've been really leveling up our, our blog post. Uh, and then along with that, we also had a, a challenge as we're a startup and we're trying to hire the best of the best. And we're trying to hire the best of the best engineers. Our engineering team is, is large. It's over half the company because we're working on some really hard problems. So one way to help folks understand more about Move, we like to pull back the curtain a little bit and we started this series called, you know, Why I Joined Move. So I think we've done, I don't know, five or six of those so far. And it's just really a story from someone who's recently joined the company. And some of the folks we've featured have been engineers. We just did a story from Jared Jones, who leads our ecosystem partnerships. But it's that moment to reveal why you joined the company, share a little bit about what it's like working here. But we have found that type of content has just done wonders for our recruiting. It just makes sense. It's like we've had people as they are interviewing say, oh yeah, I read so-and-so's story about why they joined and that really, that pushed me over. I knew after I read that I had to apply too. So it's dual effort. It's just great content, but it's also this great recruiting mechanism to, to be vulnerable a little bit about that. Feature your people, talk about why they joined the company, what they love about the Move brand, what are they working on in their first you know 90 days. But that just becomes a great lever when other people are wondering about if you know they should apply or, or join Move as well. Great. And also going back to you, because I've said a couple of times you're new to the company, but that's a bit unfair to your background. What did you bring on board from your previous experience at Jack Henry, which was also in the same space, right? It, like I mentioned at the start, I uh, was the first marketer at Wade's first startup called T8 Webware. And that goes back a, a long ways. And we that company built websites for banks and credit unions all over the country. And then we rolled out a white label mobile banking app 
And in that time, we changed the company name to Bano, and then Bano got acquired by Jack Henry. So Wade was part of Jack Henry as well for a while, for a couple of years, and then he, he left to go pursue other things. And that's really after he left Jack Henry is when he started these open source projects, which then became Move. But at Jack Henry, I led marketing there for the Bano business unit, now inside. And that was an interesting ride because Bano was acquired, and in some ways we almost acted like a startup inside Jack Henry. And Jack Henry is a, a large company, 7,000 employees, one of the, the big cores here in the U.S. But we very much operated kind of on our own. We had to fight tooth and nail for it, but we still were able to keep the banal brand alive. There's still a, a banal website that looks fantastic, but it looks very different than the Jack Henry website. And you, you would pick up on that. So we I did a lot of what I'm doing at Move of just holding on to that brand, producing content, working with that that sales team on different collateral and decks that they need so they can go have really great uh, conversations with their banks and credit unions. Yeah, and I know that about marketing is about, it's about, well, doing the stuff, but it's also about building the engine that allows to grow, right? We talk a lot about process uh, and yeah. things like that, or ongoing positioning thing. Yep, it's, it's another thing. I can't uh, state it enough, just that the relationships you build, whether you're at a startup or a big company like Jack Henry, I treat marketing like a, a product. It's, it's never done, but you have to have these feedback cycles. Just like a product manager wants to hear from their users and get that feedback so they can go make the next feature. That's how I think of marketing as well. It's the, it's the same thing. It's, hey, I want to go meet and have a great relationship with the sales team because they're the ones out there using all this collateral or they're on the front lines day to day pitching this stuff. So I want to hear from them what's working, what's not. Oh, okay, that, that piece of collateral is missing this. Great, let's get that updated for you. So it's really that circular process and getting that feedback and getting the sales team or whoever is on the front lines what they need so they can properly pitch, but then just recognizing, hey, you're never done with that stuff. It's ongoing. And I think that's where that relationships with those folks comes into play. If if they're trusting you, they're going to take your stuff and run with it. And if you trust them, you're going to listen to the feedback and make sure you're always uh, improving it so they can keep doing what they do. Yeah. And talking to marketing and sales, so very clearly you're marketing developers. Are the developers also the, what would you call them, decision or the person who purchases your product? And if not, how do you deal with that? Yeah, it's such a great, great question. No, we very much recognize the developer who we are speaking to is not ultimately that person who's going to sign the agreement or make the you know buying decision. They're not the, the buyer, but the developer very much is the influencer. So our big bet is that if we solve the developer's problem and make it incredibly easy to use our platform, where it just as a use case, if they discover move and say, they can get API keys and open up a sandbox and build a proof of concept like in a couple of hours time and have this be this amazing experience. Our big bet is that they're then going to go take that to their higher ups and say, hey, I just built this amazing thing or this proof of concept using Move's platform. You need to go talk to their sales team. So that's really our big bet is like if we can delight the developer and solve their problem, they're going to in turn become our internal champion. And even though they're not the uh, signing the agreement or signing the contract, they're very much going to vouch for us and say, yes, I, I don't want to use anything else but move. Mr. or Mrs. VP, go talk to move sales team and let's get this done. That's our, our hope and what we're going for. So you're going, uh, I would say, bottoms up rather than top down. That's the right uh, Absolutely. Approach. Yep. Uh, then marketing to developers. So is, I think, a challenge for many companies. Because typically those are people that don't really want to be marketed. How do you deal with that? A couple of ways. It, it, one, it really, uh, I'll, I'll speak to our brand and then I'll speak to the community. One, I think it comes with our brand. Uh, we touched on it a little bit, but really, I, even though we say, we joke about being the most boring company, then oxymoron, uh, I, I think that speaks to what we're building. The problem we're trying to solve is just this root level problem of being able to move money. But on the surface, I think Move's brand really resembles more of a lifestyle brand, right? It's not your typical fintech. And there's some amazing fintech companies out there, very large, but we don't look like those other players on purpose. In some ways, this represents uh, Wade's background. He, in the early days, a semi-pro BMX rider. So you could almost see Move as having that, that energy to it. And that vibe to it, so I could see that move sticker on a skateboard or on a BMX bike, right? And it's it's more of a lifestyle brand. So I think that in itself 
is marketing. Like just your voice and your tone and how you talk and how you tweet is very much part of your marketing. So even though it's welcoming, it's engaging, it's warm, it's something that hopefully developers can relate to and can say, oh yeah, that's that's cool. I would put that sticker on my laptop or I would wear that a hoodie from those guys or whatever it may be. And then on the community side, really, our community is the marketing machine to those developers. Again, I, I mentioned early on, we Graham runs the community, that's his domain, and we're very careful about crossing lines. I don't really do much in his world, I assist with some things behind the scenes, but we're very intentional with that. We don't, I don't ever want it to, I'm never going to hop in that Slack channel and start saying, hey, go sign up for this or send folks to like some lead gen page. I every once in a while will post something about an event that Wade's on, but that's about it because a lot of those folks look up to Wade or they know Wade, so they're interested in that. They're like, oh yeah, if I can get on a clubhouse chat with Wade tonight, yeah, I want to hear about that. But that's, I'm never in there promoting something else or saying, hey, come sign up for a, a trial of our product or anything. And, and again, that's very intentional. So really our marketing really stems a lot from that community and, and our name being associated with the, the FinTech DevCon conference coming up in September. It's really back to that community and letting that community discover move on their own. Yeah, that makes sense. And I have to compare it to, you know, the average iron room who's also talking to developers, a lot of Stripe. And indeed, I, I can see a very different vibe, which, you know, make, makes perfect sense. So now in order to conclude you with your outlook and advice, do you have any advice for B2B FinTech founders or founding team, which perhaps are not at the stage where they can hire a full-time marketer? Are there a few tips that they can start implementing? If assume they're in the same uh, boring <laughs> type of field as, as you are. Yeah, it's, it's such a great technical question. Technical industry I think, is technical. I, I think if you are the, the lone marketer at a startup or even you're that founder who you know is doing part of the marketing on your own, which is often the case, it's, it's really doubling down on what you bring to the table. Even my four months at Move, we haven't been doing any crazy campaigns or anything new. It's like basic stuff, but we're just we're bringing value. It's, yeah, let's really tighten up our blog. And let's commit to that. Let's try to get one or two blog posts out a week. And, but that just doesn't happen overnight. It starts with, yeah, let's st build an internal process and have a review cycles and build out a calendar. And, oh, we got one blog post this week, and then we missed a week, and then the following week we got two out. That's how it starts. So when you see all these amazing blogs, like you have to recognize that didn't happen overnight. It started with one writer or one marketer putting processes in place and starting it and then before you know it over a month's time it's oh now this engine like what you said george is going now we do two blog posts a week there's a review cycle it's got it just it goes on its own so it's i would say don't overthink like it's so easy to get distracted about we have to do social media and we have to do a stand up a slack community and we have to do i have to work on our website and i have to do it's yes and yes pull back and ask yourself what can i do right now i'm the only person here hey, I'm a pretty good writer. I could start writing our blogs or I could start our blog. Maybe we don't have a blog. So it's really taking what you're bringing to the table and doubling down on it just to get that machine going, I think would be my, my biggest advice. Great advice. It's not about hacking something or jumping onto um, TikTok or whatever, which might be an idea, but it's, it's not that yeah, That's right. <laughs> sure. and, and what about you know, your outlook for the industry? What are you most excited about at Move? Yeah, that's such a great question. I. Uh, really just excited about our, our product and the problem we're trying to solve. There's there's so much work that can be done and with the, the trend of every company becoming a fintech company, I just love that we're pulling things back, going down to the networks, like being just uh, kicking off these payment modalities and just really encouraging developers to focus on what they signed up to do. They want to build product. They don't want to necessarily build or figure out payments. So I just, I love that it's, I think developers rule the world and they can build amazing things. And if we can unblock them, then they can focus on their product and then we can handle the payment stuff and they know that it's just going to work. And that's what they want. That's really what they want. They just want uh, it just to work. They don't want to have to necessarily worry about all the details and all the compliance and the risk and who's underwriting that payment and all that fun, gnarly stuff that we get to figure out. So that's really exciting to me, just that we can delight those developers who all of a sudden Maybe they think they are up against this huge mountain of stuff, but then hopefully they discover Move and they have this aha moment of, oh, Move's got that figured out. Now I can get back to what I really want to be building. I think that's such a, an honor in some ways to be able to hopefully provide that to developers. Great. 
And finally, so we learned about the founder Wade and his BMX, and you know, I, I just checked on his LinkedIn and I saw there was a, there was a, a BMX part of the career, uh, I think it's the before <laughs> yeah. move, so it all, it all comes full circle. Uh, but what about you? Is there any skills or passions that uh, most people wouldn't know about? Yeah, there, I, I get asked this every once in a while, and it's, I include it in, in my bios here and there, but it's you know, outside of movement. I'm, I'm a big runner. That's the obvious one, and you'll know that about me if uh, you follow me on, on Twitter or Strava. So I, I run all the time when I can, but outside of that, then I one thing that folks sometimes don't know about me or they're surprised is that I, I scream in a hardcore metal band, and I that's the that's the scene I grew up in, in my as a youngster and going to punk rock and metal shows. So I put the, that down for a while in college and after college, but then there's a, in the last couple of years, I have picked that, that outlet and that passion back up. So that's, if I'm not working or running or hanging out with my family, then I'm hopefully jamming with the guys and screaming my head off in some a hardcore song. Hey, that's funny. That's the kind of hobby that uh, you often don't pick up again in older right. age, but well done for doing so. And you might be surprised, yeah. but I ask this question to quite a few people, founders and CTOs, etc. in FinTech, and you're not the first one who is a metal <laughs> band, so maybe I'll connect oh, I you. I love it. Brian, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much, and all the best to you and uh, the team at Move. We look forward to seeing what else you're going to build. Yeah, this was a really fun conversation. Thank you so much.